people real issues of course with the man on the ground and this time round we decided to actually get on the ground in yuna we understand that we are actually having the Un the uganda convention it's actually under which today is the day they are actually closing we had a couple of activities that were that took place over the weekend on friday that was the start of the convention it was very very great i saw a couple of uh, ugandans actually getting a uh, part of the conversation online and many of those actually who are still here and the ones in the diaspora made it much more profound so that very particular day when we had we had the opening that was on friday then on saturday they had they should have had a picnic but for some reasons actually that didn't happen and then they had a boat cruise which was actually great but before the boat cruise they actually had the annual general meeting now, what happens in the annual general meeting is they have updates about the country. What have they achieved as the Ugandans in diaspora? They make projections here and there. And it so happens that in Uganda, 20% of what contributes to the national uh, GDP actually comes from abroad. And today we are humbled to have a conversation with a couple of those actually who are in UNA. And with me, I have a Julius Kabugu who happens to be the director, communications of COSA, uh, Miss Uganda, that is uh, the, the the California pageant, right? Julius. Hello. Good morning, Julius. Hello. Good morning. Uh, nice to meet you. Thank Ni you for having me. Nice to have you too. All right, Julius, I'll start with the simplest things. What are some of the projections you've made? Mwengaba na Uganda, abadi mu diaspora. Uh, what, what, some of the, what again? Sorry? Uh, what are some of the projections you've made with regards to the annual general meeting that happened a few, uh, that was a day before? Uh, what are those projections and how best can they benefit a Ugandan back here? Oh, well, I think that the most important conversations that go on um, in, in the annual general meetings are, you know, hey, um, how do we improve the lives of uh, Ugandans living mm. abroad? Mm. As an association, how do we find uh, value? Mm. Uh, how, how do we improve their livelihoods? You mm. know, as an association, uh, th things mm. like group insurance, um, but also some conversations regarding how we engage the government of Uganda, mm. because the government of Uganda actually does uh, does re remit some money to to North American Association mm. to um, help uh, to to ki to contribute to community activities. Yeah, in our Yes, communities across the, the across North America and the United Kingdom, I believe, mm. um, and it's, it's a token of appreciation. I think um, you know towards all the remittances we make mm. as uh, Ugandans living in the diaspora to Uganda. Um, some of the projections, uh, I think, you know, n not too much news came out of uh, the Ugandan South American Association annual general meeting, but there's a general call for unity, more yeah. unity, because uh, you know this uh, divisionism. Uh, keeps us from, you know, creating more opportunities for ourselves and for our uh, families living uh, back home in Uganda. Mm. But uh, it, there wasn't too much news coming out of AGM this time. Just uh, a message of more unity and continue, continue to, to engage the government in, you know, some of the issues that go on in the country, yeah. like dual citizenship, land ownership, and also the political things that are happening. Oh, yeah. Uh, talking about that, uh, last year, if I should say, in the second uh, pageant of uh, Miss Uganda, North America, I understand you're at the core of this entire pageantry. You used uh, Yvonne Kushe then, who was the Miss Uganda, North, uh, North, North America, to actually boost tourism, and you are here on the ground. Did you achieve anything with regards to this move? Yeah, I think we, we have created, well, as, the, as Miss Uganda, North America, um, we have, uh, you know, in collaboration with the uh, 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 Uganda Tourism Board and Uganda Wildlife Authority, we have created a sense of responsible tourism. Mm. Um, because most of us people living in the diaspora, we've come to appreciate the importance of not just uh, touring sites, but preserving things that are important for the cultures and and uh, um, um, standard of living of the locals in the areas that mm. we, we visit. If you go to China, if you go to you know uh, Japan, or or you go to Egypt in the pyramids, you're not allowed to touch some of these things. They have a sense of preservation, and also they have a sense of you must give back to local communities. Oh, yeah. And uh, what we have achieved as Michigan and North America is to encourage our diaspora people 
to travel to Uganda with a mm. sense of giving back. So our tour is not only tourism, mm. but it's also culture and, um, and also learning more about local communities and also, you know, spending some time with charity organizations in the local communities that we tour to mm. give back not only money to, mm. to the tourism industry, but make sure we do things that improve the livelihoods of the local communities that we visit. I understand. This time around, we have Sharom Amburu. What makes us stand out? And do we have hope that she will actually achieve whatever is actually aligned by the pageantry? Um, what do we have in store? Sorry. Um, I'm asking about um, the current uh, Miss Uganda North, uh, North America, who happens to be yeah. Shalom Amburu. Yeah. Shalom what Amburu. makes her stand out and how will she achieve oh. those, uh, those well, values you've actually I, explained? I think this was a very, very challenging uh, uh, beauty pageant for the judges because we had a class of 12 girls that were really intelligent mm. from very many different fields. Yep. Um, our message of women empowerment, feminism, and um, you know, uh, uh, this uh, you know, encouraging women to stand together to promote each other and yeah. also stand with their sisters back in Africa and you know, help them create more opportunities for entrepreneurship and mm. business. I think we achieved. Uh, we achieved a sense of greatness by having the class of 2018 as a whole. But mm. Shalom Aburu stood out as the most, I guess, most intelligent. You know, despite all of them being really, really great, mm. her, her intelligence, you know, is, is superb. She is a, a mother, which is a, a new thing for us as a beauty pageant, but I think a trend setter for uh, also many other beauty pageants across the world that, you know, women who are mothers doesn't mean it's the end of their, you know, ability to inspire and oh, go yeah. out and do great things. Mm. Um, but also she is, you know, a very, very intelligent person who really understands the message we're trying to spread of women, more women mm. in leadership. All right. Um, I understand that we should have had the ambassador there with us, but I'm sure he's actually still, he has not he, given he his speech. Uh, he, he is actually here waiting. Uh, waiting oh, yeah, let me, let me have the ambassador. <laughs> Uh, we we okay. are going to have the ambassador actually talking to us. He happens to be, of course, uh, Mr. Sebu Jakatende. Um, let's have a conversation with him. I will engage you a little later, Julius. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. We're still at Morning at 10 TV, reality on the ground, and we're engaging our, of course, uh, Ugandans in the diaspora, where the unit convention is actually underway. And tonight is the closing day. I've seen, if you actually see on, online, you can see that they're actually having their last bit of uh, uh, finalizing uh, the bit of the talks there. And today, we, we, we are glad to have the ambassador, Mr. Katende. Nice to have you, Sewo. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm honored to have you. As a policymaker, what did you have, uh, what message did you carry um, in, in the delivery about, you know, this time around? Well, there were very many messages. Mm. Uh, one of them is a message of unity. Mm. The yeah. other one is a message of, uh, of, of solidarity. Yes. The other one is a message of well-being for all Ugandan diaspora, mm. for their prosperity and also for their contribution toward the socio-economic development of Uganda. Mm. I understand. Mr. Katende, uh, just a few months ago, globally, we had a trend that was actually online. That was the free Bobby Wine uh, that actually got a lot of trendings. We had a lot of demonstrations. But Yuna has not profoundly come out strongly to talk about this, even in your address. What is the stand on Yuna about this? Well, Yuna was, is, is, was, it was the forum for the Ghana diaspora to come together on on, on agreed themes. Yeah. One of those was uh, on how to do business mm. with each other and how to do business for the benefit of that home. Mm. Of course, they had the opportunity to, uh, to discuss the political situation at home. Mm. And uh, there were assurances first that uh, Uganda mm. is committed to the of democracy. Mm. It remains committed to the tenets of uh, 
respect for human rights, yep. as well as uh, good governance mm. and law. So that that far, mm. many questions came up as to what is happening at home, mm. as we had issues relating to those of Chagulanis and so on. Yes. Assurance was made that uh, anybody who might have broken the law will be subjected to the same law, mm. whether it's a political leader or a security agent. Anybody who must have broken the laws mm. will be subjected to the same laws. So that assurance was made. Was made. All right, uh, uh, His Excellency Katende, how does this event impact the economy of the country? Thank you very much. First of all, the government of Uganda mm. recognizes the positive role being played by the Ugandan diaspora. Mm. According to the World Bank report of 2017, mm. the Ugandan diaspora the world over contributed 1.4 billion US dollars. Yep. That is in one year. Wow. However, this amount of money does not go as a solid amount. It goes in scattered form mm. in terms of uh, people sending money to relatives, mm. sending money to, to to, to their children for school fees, mm. for medical, or even others doing some small investments mm. at home, like building personal houses. Mm. Now, the engagement we have been having with them is to have this one to a higher note. Mm. For example, we want this one point, by the way, 1.4 billion is from all over. Here from North America, mm. it's uh, around 100 million from USA, and, and I think around 30 million from Canada. Okay. So, so about one, $130 million a year. Mm. That is a lot of money, but we would like that money to be translated into mm. platforms that can make more impact mm. for the economic development of those concerned mm. as well as the country Uganda. I understand. Now, there are a number of platforms we have been proposing the mm. diaspora. The government has put in place a policy on diaspora mm. and some of the things in which they can invest in Mm. are already available. We have got uh, many industrial parks mm. being developed and uh, the diaspora are, are free to come and invest in any industrial activity in those uh, industrial parks your where there are amenities your, your, and, your... Uh, and some privileges, economic privileges. Your Excellency, now, if I may interject just a little bit, uh, what are some of the key strategies the government is actually planning to better the lives of Ugandans living abroad? Now, the, there is, for example, we have the plan mm. to establish diaspora villages mm. where the diaspora can invest in various activities within those villages. Mm. You can hold them one, all in one. For example, you have a larger area mm. allocated as a diaspora village where you'll find schools, mm. clinics, apartments, mm. uh, sports, sports amenities, from markets, mm. so that whoever lives in that village can find what he wants within that village. Now, mm. the diaspora will be welcome to come and invest in those villages. 
we also appreciate that maybe this would be difficult for individuals. Mm. That's why we are encouraging the diaspora to do the to, to do to to go the cooperative business way. I understand. So that they they, they join savings mm. and be able to do bigger things. Okay. Now yesterday. Mm. Uh, Yesterday I was happy to know mm. uh, that something more tangible took off. Mm. There is a company which they decided to form called the uh, Premier Investments. Okay. And and this one will be a company through which they can they can uh, raise capital mm. and 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 invest in various things they would decide to invest in. Your Excellency, uh, uh, just to take you a little back, you say it is a community-based approach we are actually using to make sure that we have investments uh, here and, of course, back that side. But how many Ugandans do we have in the United States and Canada? Do we have those numbers? I beg your pardon, I didn't get to you. How many Ugandans do we have in USA and, of course, in Canada? Do we have those numbers? Yes, in for example, according to the statistics, which uh, are, are, are gazetted by the World Bank, mm. we have an estimated one hundred thousand Ugandans in the United States. Okay, and uh, in Canada, it is something like uh, sixty thousand. Mm. I understand. All right, this would be my last question those, to you. Those are big. Those are those are big numbers, by they the are. way. They For are. example, take it to one person contributes mm. $100 per month mm. to that fund. You, you make a saving of $100 per month. Without a doubt. If everybody responds, that's mm. a lot of capital. I understand. You can, you can take, put up a, a, a big plot of flats, of a, mm. blo a block of flats, your, your, and start earning yes. money from rent. Your Excellency, before I let you go, how best can the country utilize the youth in the diaspora for benefit of the country? No, we, are, we, the, 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 we have got already the law mm. and the institutions are being uh, uh, put in place. Mm. And I'm sure because... Every year there is an improvement. Mm. What I'm saying is able to see it being implemented on the ground with okay. the next mm. year. All right, Your Excellency, I have to let you go, but thank you so much for having your time. And we hope the government actually works upon a couple of strategies you've shared with us. And we wish you a very great day ahead of you. No, thank you very much. The government really respects the diaspora. Yeah. And that is why you have had a, a very high level delegation here. Yeah. We have also brought many people here mm -hmm. who can provide various services. Yeah. We as embassy, there are certain things we are supposed to do. Mm. We are supposed to issue passports to Ugandans. Mm. And for the diaspora, those who are already Uganda, uh, Americans or Canadians, yep. they are free to come and we have been providing this service here mm. and Ugandans are free to take advantage of many services uh, uh, accruing to Ugandans mm. uh, and your citizens. All right. Okay. Well, it was an honor to share with you uh, His Excellency Katende that happens to be our ambassador to Washington and uh, send a regards to everyone who is back that side. Well, that's the conversation I've been having with, of course, Ugandans in Yuna. Celebrations are underway today, marks the very last day of um, the Yuna convention. Many Ugandans actually went, a uh, very owner from Uganda, they actually went back that side and they can contribute greatly and tremendously to our economy. And that takes us for a short commercial break. Leromba de Kugraundi and New York. Amandru, Chama. Get on one to our and see. Take a break for now.